Hey all, so back with another Spotlight with Context, and this time we are talking about Dust. Really cool character. Um, some of y'all have already picked up on the fact that she has, as far as I know, an entirely new look in our game relative to her comic appearances, and I think the art team absolutely smashed it. I am really, really happy with uh, the representation she brings to the game, and she's just a very cool mutant character within the game. So skipping for the most part over base stats for prestige, uh, her prestige puts her around kindred, um, so decently high but not top 5 or top 10. Looking at the attributes, survivability you have 3.5, a lot of this is on the backs of her immunities, and then also her ability to glance incoming hits while blocking. Both of those help quite a bit. Damage of four. This one's going to be a little bit interesting because it kind of depends on how you play her. There's a, a learning curve with exactly how to line things up with Dust. She's definitely got some things in common with Namor as far as building up to the payout, feeling like you're not doing a whole lot, and then, oh my god, where did the opponent's health bar go? So I think four is a good way to capture that overall, but just keep in mind that she is very much about figuring out when to go for your payout, and so her performance against different health pools, against different opponents, may swing a bit. Ease of use, 3.5. This has kind of been our default lately, and I think it's fair again here. You can use combos, throw specials. Dust definitely has some nice extra skill expressions on top of that. Figuring out exactly how many hits to do in each combo for optimal play is something we'll talk about later. And I think especially, like I just mentioned in the damage portion, figuring out how best to cash out with her specials is something that takes a little bit of time. Utility of four is very fair. Again, her immunities count towards this. She also has access to grit, which is the ability to bypass unstoppable abilities without putting a debuff on the opponent. It is not a form of ability accuracy reduction, and so gets around things like force of will. Generally, really strong ability there. And then defender strength of three, Basically, if you play her correctly, you're probably not going to worry much about Dust. There are plenty of good counters to her. But if you mess up a couple times, then you are probably going to take a fair amount of unavoidable damage and it's going to slow you down and annoy you, and then you'll close her out normally. So there is some threat there. Moving on to strengths and weaknesses. We've already talked about it twice, so it's very fair to lead with immunities. Dust is immune to bleed, poison, and shock. Same as Sandman, this makes her very easy to path on a war map and useful in battlegrounds. Condensed and powerful specials. Like I said, she is somewhat similar to Namor in that she builds up to just throwing a bunch of big specials all at once. Her damage is very concentrated. And sometimes that is exactly what you need to close out a fight once you've woven around other threats, right? And then Purify Punishment. This is not kidding. Uh, Dust is one of the best Purify Punishers in the game. It significantly boosts her initial ramp and then her damage on her payout. Weaknesses. She has a thematic weakness to Incinerate and Plasma. Both of these very common in Tech Champions. These will just get rid of her Sand kind of like with Incinerate and Shock against Tuma. Ramp Time is another one I've already mentioned. Dust can do a lot of damage very quickly, but only after a certain minimum build time. And so there is kind of a floor to how quickly she can go. Then lastly, Physical Damage Negation. Um, like it says, all of Dust's damage is physical. If you're facing somebody with very high physical resistance, especially if they have crit resistance, she's going to feel significantly slower. So there are a few skill champions that she does have some trouble with. Now, moving on to the kit itself, we have already mentioned the immunity to bleed, poison, and shock. Additionally, Dust's light and heavy attacks do not make contact with the opponent. So none of her light attacks. 
and the reach on her lights is decent. We did specifically test to make sure that she could counter some heavy attacks, such as Atuma's, with lights. So that is something to practice for sure if you are trying to avoid ever technically making contact with the opponent. When Dust performs a well-timed block, incoming attacks have a 100% chance to glance. So remember that glancing includes a clause for reducing ability accuracy by 100%. This means that as long as you well-timed block, Dust, like Ironheart, can shut off abilities like Kinetic Transference, like Masochism, when she parries. It's not always on with her blocks, but specifically when she parries, she has a lot of utility packed into this one sentence here. As a defender, this triggers on all blocks against basics, so be very careful hitting into Dust's block. And then if the opponent has the Willpower Mastery active, it is removed. I completely understand this is going to ruffle some feathers. She does not have access to healing reversal the way that Photon did, and so I won't pretend that this is saving you the way that it was with Photon, but at the same time, Dust would basically have no threat at all if this line wasn't here, and she would struggle significantly more as an attacker, so it is here. Apologies to those who always use a particular infamous set of masteries. Moving on to sand effects. I'm going to read out from the dev notes here because I have to. Dust sand debuffs are coarse and rough and irritating, and they get everywhere. So, whenever the opponent or their block is struck by a medium attack or has a hit glance, they're inflicted with a sand debuff for six seconds. So that's a lot of little clauses. Breaking it down... This means that Dust's medium attacks inflict a sand debuff either when they land or when they hit the opponent's block, and then any time Dust causes glancing, she also inflicts a sand debuff. These only last for six seconds, but that's okay, you just want to get them up. The purpose is to then get rid of them, which we'll get to in a second. Punishing a heavy attack or special attack with either a light or medium inflicts two sand debuffs for six seconds. So the fact that this works with lights, again, uh, means that you can get access to these extra sand debuffs by punishing heavies and specials with a non-contact attack, because none of her light attacks make contact that does come up from time to time, such as against a Tuma. When the opponent purifies a debuff, Dust deals a burst of physical damage and inflicts an indefinite sand passive. But if the purified debuff was itself a sand debuff, you get two additional sand passives. So the goal of her kit is to stack sand debuffs and then purify those into sand passives. So it's a very good thing that we have this next bullet, which is that as an attacker, Dust's light attacks purify her most recently inflicted personal debuff. Meaning that you inflict these sand debuffs with mediums, then immediately purify them off the opponent with your lights, and they then turn into three sand passives. So as long as you land those lights within six seconds of the original debuff, you get to triple them and make them permanent. And then here's the weakness. Inflicting dust with an incinerate or plasma effect crystallizes her sand, removing one sand effect from her opponent. Reminder that effect means either debuff or passive. Now I mentioned earlier that one of the pieces of skill expression with Dust is knowing how long to make your combos. That comes from this section here. Because if you imagine how the fight starts, you parry, that immediately inflicts a sand. You throw a medium attack, that inflicts another sand. So then your first two lights are both purifying a sand off the opponent. Now there is no sand on the opponent. In a certain sense, your third light attack would be a waste. And so the optimal thing to do is to actually shorten your combo and just immediately go to your second medium, having that first combo only be four hits. Then you parry again, and now there are two sand debuffs on your opponent. One from your second medium, one from your parry. 
you throw your first medium, it's now up to three sand debuffs. This time, it is optimal to throw all three lights and then another medium. Similarly, when your opponent throws a heavy or after their special attacks, if you punish it properly, then you are going to instantly have more sand debuffs, and so it is again optimal to use all of your light attacks. Sometimes after punishing a special, it's even optimal to use all four of your light attacks to make sure you purify everything. This also changes up if you hit into the opponent's block more often with your mediums, because maybe you're trying to bait a special that's also going to inflict sand. The point is that there is some ebb and flow here, with exactly what combos are optimal. Now, if you don't always do the optimal combos, Dust will still work fine. This is not a make or break thing for her kit, but you can eke out a fair amount more of these sand passives relative to how much power you're giving the opponent if you pay attention to this. And we'll get to why that matters very soon. So, Sandstorm. As an attacker, when Dust performs a heavy attack, she spins up a Sandstorm for 16 seconds. When finished, it then goes on cooldown for 8 seconds. So you can have an uptime on this of almost two-thirds of the fight. It's generally going to be a bit less than that because you don't necessarily want to start off with a Sandstorm. You can, and you sometimes might want to for utility reasons, but usually you're going to want to ramp a bit before your first one. As a defender, when Dust's opponent reaches four sand effects, Dust spins up a sandstorm for eight seconds. This does not have a cooldown. It's only eight seconds, but keep this in mind. This is what you're trying to avoid when fighting a defending Dust. Do not get to four sand effects. This means that you are going to have to be very careful with hitting into her block. I'm also going to skip ahead a little bit. It means you're going to have to learn her special one evade. Those are the two things that you really have to watch for. When a sandstorm is spun up, Dust removes all sand effects on the opponent, both debuffs and passives, and for each effect removed, she gains a prowess passive. This is why you want to purify those debuffs into the three passives, because then you're getting three of these prowesses instead of just one. These last until the sandstorm ends. Sandstorm and the prowess effects here are not affected by ability accuracy modification, so you don't have to worry about these individually failing, you just get all of them. These prowess stack up to 99. It's also worth calling out now that there is another way to get a sandstorm on the special three, that one lasts longer, so this heavy attack trigger is generally something you're going to be doing for shorter fights. Now, the reason that you want Sandstorm active, or if you're fighting Dust, you really don't want it active, is all of this next section. Whenever she would inflict a sand effect during Sandstorm, she instead gains an additional prowess passive, so she keeps ramping, and a power efficiency passive, reducing the cost of special attacks by 3% for 8 seconds. But these 8 second passives are themselves paused, when you land a light attack for 0.3 seconds. So as long as you're staying aggressive, you can still get... Uh, <clears throat> so as long as you're staying aggressive, you can make these last a decent amount of time. And the way this works out is that you still have an incentive to do your full five hit combos and gain more power for your specials because your mediums are giving you sand and your light attacks are giving you power and pausing these special efficiencies. Sometimes you may want to spend a little bit more time going medium, medium, but the fact that the power efficiency passives are paused by your lights does mean that you are not wasting your time doing them. As an attacker, the opponent's basic attacks have a 60% chance to glance when hitting into Dust's block while Sandstorm is up. So you now have even more access to this glancing all the time as long as your Sandstorm is out. Opponents are also dealt physical damage every second. This scales with base attack only on both attack and defense and is reduced by 60% while the opponent is blocking. Get it? Because they're, they're covering their face? Anyway, really love this. You can play around it a little bit on defense, but it's important to remember if you're blocking, she's probably hitting into your block, and then she's gaining both additional prowess passives and power efficiencies, 
and you're taking block damage, so you're not really reducing the damage that much. Try to avoid Sandstorm against a defending Dust. It's going to chip you down, even if you are doing a good job of mitigating it. Additionally, Dust gains a Grit passive. We mentioned this earlier, Grit is the same effect that was found on Chielf, and is very similar to Valkyrie's signature ability. This allows Dust to basically ignore unstoppable effects on the opponent. It does not function through ability accuracy, and so you don't need to worry about any kind of extra ability accuracy. Sandstorm is paused during the opponent's special attacks, and expires 50% slower during Dust's special attacks. And it also cannot end during her special attacks. So what this means is that you are not taxed at all for when your opponent throws specials, and you get more time out of it the more that you are throwing specials. That's why it is worth it to land those light attacks and build more power. That last clause is really nice because it means that no matter how little time you have left on Sandstorm, if you squeeze out one more special during it, the full special is going to benefit from these prowess passives before they go away. So that's extremely helpful. So the special one is going to be very different depending on whether Dust is attacking or defending. For a Defending Dust, this is kind of the main threat, because this inflicts sand on every hit, the sand does go through block, and so this is the biggest risk of Sandstorm activating. So make sure that you learn this dex, make sure that you can get at least almost all of it. I, if I remember correctly from my testing, it's not the end of the world if you block one of the hits in the middle of this, maybe the first hit but definitely make sure that you do not block the last hit. That is usually what tips you over into Sandstorm. And then as an attacker, this is normally what you use when you are already ramped out and you are paying out with your Sandstorm. Because remember your specials are going to cost less, it, it is possible to throw many special ones in very quick succession. This isn't something we normally call out, but I will say Dust's special one does more damage per bar of power spent than does her special 2. That is not a normal thing in characters. They're normally pretty even, um, but it is a pretty significant disparity for her. So once you're in Sandstorm and you have those prowesses, your goal is to throw a bunch of special ones. Now, the reason that you might throw the special two is because the final three hits each inflict a physical vulnerability debuff for 20 seconds, and then if these debuffs are purified, which you can do with her light attacks because those purify personal debuffs, they are replaced with passive versions that are 50% stronger. And then if Sandstorm is active, the final hit inflicts a stun passive for two seconds. So normally when you go into Sandstorm, you are immediately going to throw the special two because it's going to give you those physical vulnerabilities and the stun passive. You run in, hit the opponent with your medium. That's going to give you a prowess and a power efficiency. You land three lights that purifies all three physical vulnerabilities into their stronger passives. And then you keep going. At this point, this is probably where you're throwing a relic if you have it to then throw the special one. That's how your cash out works. It is generally worth it to use the special three specifically because of these physical vulnerabilities and the way it sets up the special one so well, even though, like I said, it does a bit less damage on its own. Now, the special three we mentioned earlier, this is the other way to get into a sandstorm. This is what you're going to be chasing in longer fights or maybe against particularly large opponents in Battlegrounds even. The Special 3 does not consume power at all, but it also cannot be activated while Sandstorm is active, and it itself spins up a Sandstorm for 22 seconds. So that is longer than the base one of only 16. This Sandstorm does not have a cooldown. So you could technically throw the special three and just sit at the special three until um, the sandstorm goes away 22 seconds later, and then you could throw another special three. And you would be doing damage the whole time because of that physical damage uh, per second. And you could, quote, cheese a fight that way 
but good lord would it take forever, because remember the physical damage scales with base attack only. Would not recommend, but I do want to call it out, because I know I'm going to get a comment about it. Yes, it is technically possible to just sit and throw multiple special threes. However, what you are supposed to do with this is spin up a larger sandstorm and then still have three bars of power so that you can throw that special two into multiple special ones like we were talking about. That is how dust does a lot of damage. Additionally, while this sandstorm is active, whenever dust would inflict a sand effect, she also deals even more physical damage than normal. So you get those prowess passives, the power efficiencies, and bursts of damage whenever you inflict the sand. And like I said, you're just going to want to be comboing into your specials because your specials are going to be doing a ton of damage. Now, one thing to call out, unlike Namor after his special three, she does not have a way of reducing how much power the opponent gains. That is going to be something that you want to watch for. However, that doesn't necessarily work against her because if your opponent is gaining more power, they are presumably throwing more specials, allowing you to punish those specials and gain extra sand, which means extra prowess and extra power efficiencies. So you do still benefit even from that. Then moving on to the signature ability, whenever either champion's combo meter reaches a multiple of 10, Dust inflicts a sand debuff for six seconds. So this is something that you're gonna have to pay attention to against a defending Dust because if you hit her too many times or if you gain combo too quickly, you can potentially get to four sand just off of this and maybe blocking her mediums, right? That's what you want to avoid. You want to play slowly enough against her that these fall off naturally, you're not gaining too much from blocking her mediums, and you have the full decks down on the special one, and then she's very simple, right? But I want to call out that threat, especially if you are trying to use a skill champion that gains extra combo or something which, you know, is thematic for a mutant. Moving on, when fighting against skill champions and while Sandstorm is active, Dust gains a steadfast passive, so she already has the grit, so she doesn't have to worry about unstoppable. This also allows her to block unblockable attacks. Whenever Dust prevents a bleed effect via immunity, she also has a chance to inflict one sand debuff on the opponent, for that standard six seconds. So this just makes her that much better against skill opponents who like bleed or even certain nodes like hazard shift or biohazard. On to her synergies. With Kamala Khan, the other Muslim character in MCOC, Dust gets connected faith. After spinning up a sandstorm, her next special attack is passively unblockable. This is awesome. <laughs> because that is sometimes the hardest part about Sandstorm is that you spin it up and then you lose some chunk of it waiting for a good opening, right? However, if that first special attack is passively unblockable, especially if it's the special two, then you guaranteed get it in. If it's the special two, then it also stuns. Like I said, maybe you have a relic ready at this point. So you combo into that and then you throw a special one and maybe that just ends the fight, right? So this sets her up for some really nice closeouts. For Kamala Khan, whenever her poison immunity is triggered, she gains a fury buff. These only stack up to three, but Kamala gets some pretty nice bonuses from her furies. So that is quite nice for her. The Shallow Twins with Jubilee. Whenever the opponent purifies, Dust has a 35% chance to inflict another Sand Passive. Because remember, that already happens when they purify. This just has her ramp that much faster. When Jubilee's opponent purifies a debuff, she pauses the current Firework Surge. There are certain times in Jubilee's rotation when this may actually work against you, but if you are just cooking with gas and doing a lot of damage then you'll appreciate it. Moving on to roommates with X-23. Dust gets another benefit when striking an opponent while Sandstorm is active, which remember by default means that she has her grit passive. Every single attack against an unstoppable opponent is gonna give Dust a personal prowess passive. So you can ramp very, very quickly against some of those annoying skill defenders with their unstoppables. 
and then X23 starts each fight with a Disguise Charge. When struck by an attack that would deal more than 5% of her max health, she consumes the charge to lower the damage to zero. This does not work against Special 3, but is basically like a single-use Super Iceman Ice Armor, right? Benders of Earth. That's totally legally distinct. With Sandman, Terax, Magneto, Magneto House of X, and Karnak, they all get 4% attack rating for each unique Synergy Champion on the team. So you can start to go to town with all of them on a single Earthbending team. Generic friends with Kamala Khan, Wolverine Phoenix, and Wolverine X-23. And that is Dust. I really think that she is a ton of fun. Like I said, it takes some getting used to with exactly what kind of cash out you want to do with her. Whether you want to do a heavy into a special two, into special ones, or whether you want to go for the special three. Or maybe whether you just want to spin up the Sandstorm and then try and close things out with a couple special ones, right? That's something that you're going to have to play around with uh, with her, and it's probably going to vary a bit on the opponent, especially if they purify. But there are a lot of really cool tools in this kit, right? Glancing on well-timed blocks, like we already talked about, has some serious potential. Triple immunities is very, very good. It's always nice to have a mutant who punishes skill purifiers, especially one that can block unblockable, because then that means that she has extra utility against Path 7 and War, where they go unblockable when they purify. There's some really nice stuff here, and it's all on a character who is fun to play and does really solid damage. I think she's going to add a lot to a lot of rosters. And I'm curious to hear your comments. So let me know, and until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.